sea level rise due to climate change is happening very fast on the front lines of the low-lying atolls in the Federated States of Micronesia. We visited Pinglap, Mokio, Sapuafik, Ta, Ulithi, and Face and discovered that climate change is a matter of life and death for these people. Our pilot was Alex Tretnoff. Oh yeah, flying to these islands uh, for 15 years, you can tell the difference because you're flying over the islands and also landing and you see the changes right here. Our guide in Mokio, Don Johnson, took us to show where the erosion is happening the most. Before, from here to here, we, we can walk. There's a coconut tree and trees there. He walked out to where the shoreline once was, which had changed more than 50 feet in the last five years. Extrapolating this over 25 years, we can see half the island will be underwater and gone in less than 50 years. During my youth time, I think the island is pretty much like the old times when I was not born, as the old people told me about that. And now I can see a lot of changes on the old island. I'm really worried about the views area. Why? Because uh, if this thing keep on wearing out, maybe the land will disappear. This has the islanders very worried about their future, and there are large populations of children, and we wonder what will become of them. Yes, 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 I really worry about uh, staying on the island, supporting you know, this number of children I have right now. I need to move, but we don't have anywhere to go. Not having anywhere to go, as well as their strong connection to the islands, was heard over and over again. I love my place, I love my home to leave this island. And this is your land? This is my land. Especially our elder folks who will refuse to move. They don't want to be relocated because their island is what defines them as an islander. And for them to give that up, it, it can be really, for them, they, they'd rather live or pass on rather than leave. These are our lands that we don't want to be forced to relocate from. There are biodiversity that are on our islands that may not exist anywhere. If our islands go underwater, then that biodiversity is wiped out from the face of this earth. There are bigger problems that need to be dealt with for survival today. Fresh water is a serious problem. Almost all of the underground wells have been destroyed by seawater intrusion. They rely on capturing rainwater from their roofs and storing it in these large plastic water tanks. But the droughts on these islands are becoming more frequent and longer, and more storage capacity is needed. When I was young, I remember that we used to drink the, the water from the well. And right now, we need to boil it, because you can see if you boil the water, you can see a little bit soil uh, inside the pot. The next issue for them is their food security. They are reliant on the food they grow themselves, breadfruit, coconut, banana, and most importantly, their staple, taro. The taro crops are being wiped out at an alarming rate due to saltwater inundation. One island we visited, 80% of the taro has been permanently destroyed. Before our taro patch is really good, but these days it's really getting worse. But lots of taros are uh, dying. Some people, their taros is not enough to feed the family. Yeah? Yeah, some of the place for the taro patch, now it's gone. It's totally destroyed from the sea. Oh, that's our uh, food. If we don't have taro yet, we'll die. No more food for the people of that. So what does this all mean? There are 30,000 Micronesians living on these low-lying atolls, and many of them are children. In their lifetimes, they will see their islands wash away, have periods of drought and no fresh water to drink, and continued devastation of their food crops. If this continues, these children will be forced to leave their ancestral lands and become climate refugees.
people all over the world talk about about climate change and how how you know it's going to we're going to the sea level is going to rise hey this is the front line of the battle we are on the front line and so decisions they make out there we suffer here but we're already feeling it on the front line and we're trying to make changes uh, what small changes we can make that can really contribute to you know making our communities be more adaptable the climate is changing i mean according to the data the data we've collected for 60 years it is evident that the temperature is rising the sea level is rising i think it's vital to acknowledge these problems and recognize that uh, it, it's not just for this generation, but it's for the next generation, the generations to come. The sea level is rising, the climate is changing. There is now international scientific consensus. Uh, even 10 years ago, there was a broad-based uh, coalition of scientists and policymakers who understood how urgent this question was, but now it's totally incontrovertible. And the only place where there's remaining debate about the science of climate change is in the halls of the U.S. Congress. Well, if this island, you know, sink because they've been hearing about it, what will happen to us? <laughs>